Test the auditory response by calling the patient's name loudly. Mr. Jones, open your eyes. Rub the sternum. Apply supraorbital pressure or pressure at the temporomandibular joint. Apply deep noxious stimulation to the nail bed and proximally on all extremities. In a brain dead patient, noxious stimuli should not produce grimacing, facial muscle movement, or a motor response of the limbs other than spinally mediated reflexes. Know that patients with severe peripheral neuropathy or cervical spine cord injury may not have a motor response. To assess for a blink response to visual threat, bring the examiner's hand directly into the center of their field of vision at close range and observe whether they blink. In the case of brain death, this should not elicit a blink response. To test cranial nerves 2 and 3, open the eyelids and assess the position of the eyes and size of the pupils. In brain death, the eyes are typically mid-position and fixed. In brain death, the pupils should be in mid-position and typically 4 to 6 millimeters in diameter, but they can be any shape. Small diameter pupils less than 2 millimeters are not consistent with brain death and may suggest the presence of medications or toxins like narcotics. Shine a bright light in each eye to test the pupillary light reflex. A magnifying glass helps the examiner identify any evidence of pupillary reactivity. In brain death, the pupils are non-reactive to both direct and consensual stimulation. One can also use an automated pupillometer, although this has not been studied systematically in brain death and should not be used in isolation. Beware that intraocular installation of midriatic medications may temporarily render pupils non-reactive. Additionally, ocular or corneal trauma, orbital edema or anophthalmia may preclude adequate pupillary evaluation requiring the use of ancillary testing. To elicit the corneal reflex, which is mediated by cranial nerves 5 and 7, apply pressure to the cornea at the border of the iris in both eyes using cotton swab on a stick and monitor for a blink response or more subtle closure of the eyelids. No eyelid movement should be seen in brain death. Be careful not to damage the cornea. Insert a cotton swab into the nares to assess for facial movement. There should be no facial movement. Perform the oculocephalic test, also called the doll's eyes maneuver, only in patients with a stable cervical spine and make sure the endotracheal tube remains secure during these maneuvers. Open the eyelids and rapidly turn the head side to side. Observe for any eye movement in response to head before performing the oculovestibular test, also called the caloric test. Assess the patency of both auditory canals and the presence of intact tympanic membranes. If the tympanic membrane is not intact, installation of fluid could cause an infection. To perform the oculovestibular test, elevate the head of the bed 30 degrees. Have one examiner hold the eyelids open while a second examiner instills 50 milliliters of ice cold water into the ear canal using tubing long enough to reach the middle ear while observing the eyes. In a normal patient, the eyes would have a slow component of tonic deviation towards the cold water followed by a fast component of nystagmus in the opposite direction. Observe the patient for eye movement for 60 seconds, during which the installation of the cold water should be continuous. Wait five minutes for temperature re-equilibration before repeating this assessment on the other side. No eye movement is seen in a brain dead patient. The cough and gag reflexes test cranial nerves 9 and 10. To perform these assessments, Stimulate the posterior oropharynx on both sides with a tongue depressor or rigid suction device. Stimulate the tracheal and bronchial walls with deep suctioning through the endotracheal tube to the level of the carina. Both gag and cough reflexes are absent in a brain dead patient. As with the pupillary reflex assessment, ocular trauma, orbital edema, or anophthalmia may preclude full eye evaluation, necessitating the use of ancillary testing. Any patient initiated eye movement or eyelid movement in response to corneal stimulation precludes the diagnosis of brain death. If the cervical spine is unstable and oculocephalic testing cannot be performed, ancillary testing is not needed, provided that oculovestibular testing, which is more sensitive, is still able to be performed. Ancillary testing is also recommended in persons with injury to the cervical spine because the cough reflex can be absent due to injury to the motor neurons of the phrenic nerve 
in the cervical cord in this setting. In infants and children, also assess the absence of socking and rooting reflexes.